time no see. So Sonic Dream Team has been announced and a lot of people are disappointed that this game is going to be an Apple Arcade exclusive. However, today I want to cover how not only even those who own zero Apple devices will still be able to play this game at launch, yes, despite it being an Apple Arcade exclusive, which will also be a free method free. for those trying to save a couple pennies. I also want to cover multiple examples of Apple Arcade exclusive games that they funded but still eventually got poured over to Android and Switch, as well as all the consoles, but with the catch of it being after a set amount of time. Something I have enough evidence to present that makes me believe this will also be the case with Sonic Dream Team. So there's a lot to cover today, and before I get into it, no sponsor, so drop a like to support for free, double check your sub, and what helps the most is give the video a share, maybe to a friend, maybe to social media. It's some good information that's going to help all the people seething that they can't play Sonic Dream Team. Oh, and last thing I want to mention, I have a new channel with Dumbsville and Alice Mark called Film Sheet, where we go over and make a video podcast with clips and stuff on all the current most popular movie releases. So give it a watch after this. I'll put a title card at the end and drop us up there if you like it. Yeah, yeah. That was really funny when I saw him at... <laughs> I for, what, what is it? I forgot what the convention is called, but... uh, Ohio we, uh, Con. <laughs> it was not Ohio Con. No, it's it's called like Next Con or something. No, it was Ohio Con. World. Down in Ohio. Yeah, it was Ohio Con, dude. No, it was it was it was not called Ohio. Ohio Con, something else. He might been to both, and the it was it was the next con one. He was yeah, he was definitely at Ohio Con. Yeah, yeah, might be like he might been at like both. I know he was really tired when I saw him. So yeah, he's probably too busy from Ohio Con the night before. He probably was just mixing up the Ohio conventions. So like, dude, it was Ohio Con. Stop trying to press us on it. We know it was Ohio Con, dude. Now, we can move on from that to Sonic Dream Team, since you did do the like sub thing. So with that, let's get into it! Now, yes, Sonic Dream Team was announced. I haven't covered anything about it, but not only am I super excited about this game, despite the fact that I'm a peasant Android user, and that this game is an Apple Arcade quote-unquote exclusive, which is the focus of today's question. Jaden, how can you play this game at launch without any Apple device? And what evidence do you have this will come to other systems after a set amount of time? So instead of covering the discourse of everyone mad that's been going around, I found two solutions for anyone looking to play this game who isn't a part of the Apple ecosystem. Now, the first option derives from a Reddit thread from two years ago with only five upvotes asking if Castlevania Grimoire of Souls was playable on a Hackintosh computer and if you could play other Apple Arcade exclusive games like this on one. And the answer unanimously is yes. Now, many of you may wonder what a Hackintosh is, and it's pretty simple. You know how your computer boots into Windows when you start it up? Well, essentially, you're able to download Mac OS and dual boot so that when you start up, you choose which OS you want to boot up to. And if you know the right place, <coughs> it's also free. All it takes is a Windows computer, and since it's a mobile game, will work on almost any modern laptop too. And with how technology and software simplicity has evolved in recent years, is now a decently easy process. Now, I'm gonna be real with you guys for a second. I'm not personally going to do this since my wife owns an iPad Pro, so I'm all set. And obviously, would rather play it there. However, I do see many people outside the Apple ecosystem frustrated they're not gonna be able to play this title, so this one goes out to you. But for the those who would rather play this game on the Switch and Android, there's also some seemingly really good news from my research for you too. Cheer up, little guy. So there's a few examples I'll cover that give me a near certain chance that in a few years, this will go from Apple Arcade to Android and actually all the modern consoles. And that's despite the obvious reports that Apple has helped them fund this game. Which for those who are non-believers, one of the biggest examples of Apple Arcade doing this is with a game called Lego Brawl. It released in September 2019 exclusively for Apple Arcade, but then made its way to Windows Switch, Xbox, World. and PlayStation in September of 2022. Another title that did this was the game mentioned in the thread earlier, Castlevania Grimoire of Souls, a game that when that thread came out was an Apple Arcade exclusive, but just like Lego Brawls, is now on other platforms and I can even download it from the Google Play Store on my Android, a situation that I suspect will be very hmm. similar to Dream Team. Like, did everyone suddenly forget that Sonic Lost World was trapped on the Wii U for over two years before it came out on PC? Now, obviously that was Nintendo and this is 
uses Apple. Guys, I'm not that stupid. But this timed exclusivity is a practice Apple does to almost all of their Apple Arcade exclusive titles in exchange for them to stay, again, exclusive on their platform. This is just like any of the big video streaming services or Game Pass or really any sort of exclusive licensing deal. It's only for a set amount of time and then it expires. Meaning at launch, only Apple bros will be playing this. Even Hackintosh users will still have to pay for a monthly Apple Arcade subscription for this. However, if you are a really patient soul, this will almost certainly come to Android as it's neck and neck with iOS for the number one operating system. So that's a huge market for them, as well as Apple who would get to profit from that, which again, they also do for the titles they release and also have Apple Music and stuff on Android. But for those who are patient, you will be rewarded with all the expansions and updates the game receives until then, which will be a nice first experience that the Apple users aren't going to get. Now, I also want to talk about the lifespan and updates from this game because I also hear a lot of concern about that. So with how much effort has been put into making this play like a real Sonic game, I imagine it will have a lifespan that lasts long past their deal with Apple, which almost all the titles that don't come over from Apple Arcade either already exist in some other form like Sonic Dash or are just small games that don't have a very long lifespan. And I've never even heard of LEGO Brawls before, but I'm certain Sonic Dream Team will be a way bigger hit. I think Sonic fans are underestimating how big of a game this is going to be for the mobile market. Now, while there are other examples of games that got funded by Apple and eventually got ported over, in those scenarios, Apple still likely took a big percentage from the game sales since they did help invest and fund the development of these titles. I'll even give you guys a worst case scenario where I still think this game is going to leave Apple Arcade. Let's say, hypothetically, that this is one of the only fully fledged titles from Apple Arcade to not get ported over to anything ever. Since this has the highest budget of any Sonic mobile title ever, it's not something they can just delist and sweep under the rug without it seriously affecting their bottom line, especially with updates in the lifespan being added to the game. Again, this isn't a Sonic Runner situation, which, while fun, isn't a very technically deep game at all. Let's say even if Apple Arcade as a service shuts down, this game will just certainly go back up as either a premium paid app or will be made free and filled with ads and microtransactions. Something Sega is no stranger to doing with their mobile games. And also in that scenario, the game would get ported over to Android in whatever appropriate platforms, likely PC because there's so much demand, potentially Xbox, PlayStation, Switch, I don't really know, probably Switch, I, I just don't know about the other two, I, I don't see it. I'm sorry Xbox and PlayStation fans, I feel your pain. Now, the past couple of weeks, I've also seen a large amount of people being very frantic and worried, bringing up terms like abandonware, abandonware and, and lost, lost media. media, because while small little spin-off Sonic Mobile games, it's true have been lost to time. This, however, is definitely not going to be the case with Dream Team, and basically every party involved has done a really good job of assuring that. The reality is that Sonic Dream Team is so much more of a real Sonic game than all of those other titles combined, no matter which developer was behind them. To put it in picture, Dream Team is a game on a scale Sega Hardlight has never done before. So there's a lot more to lose here than a reskin Temple Run or Doodle Jump clone to D-list. No offense to Sonic Dash or Sonic Jump Fever, but they're not like real Sonic games. This is a real Sonic game, fellas. And with this game's content being on a much more grand scale than any other Sonic mobile game, alongside Hardlight's solid reputation and constantly adding more and more content to their games, this is going to be a Sonic mobile game that feels much more like an awesome fan game than a clone of some already popular mobile game formula. It's something actually ambitious that I'm very interested in seeing how it comes out, especially with not only the multiple playable characters, but the swapping ability. Again, we've seen almost nothing of the game, but from what we have seen, I'm really interested, and there is a ton of room to grow with downloadable content and updates, which again, Sega Hardlight has a really good reputation of doing with all of their titles. The idea being passed around is that Sonic Dream Team will start out on Apple Arcade with only a small, modest amount of content, but over time with new characters, stages, abilities, and etc., the game will become much larger in scope, and if people are excited over Sonic Speed Simulator, something that I personally have like zero interest in, I just find it kind of boring, there's not much to it, then you you will love this game because this is like that times a bajillion. Like, in, like what, if what if instead of a time waster, waster simulator, simulator, they made they that made into that like a real like video, video game. game. And when it eventually does come to other systems, it will have all these updates and changes from over the years, making it the ultimate definitive version. Now, we all know that didn't happen with Lost World entirely, and that's because of the specifically Nintendo licensed themed DLCs like Zelda and Yoshi's Island, which those DLCs were locked behind the Wii U and are only playable on the PC version today through 
community made mods. However, with Apple Arcade, this isn't going to be the case with Dream Team. That is unless they add Beyond the Grave Steve Jobs or Tim Cook as a playable character in it. Something I think there's at best a 50-50 chance of happening. Regardless of any of the rhetoric and exclusiveness of Sonic Dream Team, I do think a new game is objectively a really good thing, even if you're mad you can't play it. One upside is, at least we're arguing about whether or not we can play the game, because almost everyone unanimously agrees that this looks like a really good game. People aren't really arguing over that, they're just arguing whether they can play it. So, I mean, at least the game looks good. Oh, also one last thing, and I know I made that long post that was going into all this personal stuff that's been going on with me, and a lot of people are probably expecting this video to be that, but to be honest, that's going to take a while because I want to make sure I have everything 100% accurate before I make anything public. And also going over the doxings and other things that have happened, it's, it's been pretty taxing, so. That's pretty much the sole reason it's been taking me so long to start uploading again. And the longer I go from uploading working on that, the more I keep rewriting this script to make this video perfect because I feel like this video has to be a banger. One out of ten, smash it. But that's all for today. Like if you like, double check your subscribe. subs, and go check out Film Sheet. Again, cool new series with me, Mark, and Grant. That's Dumbsville. I guess I, I should call him Dumbsville. Dumbsville. And that's all. Lots of love and peace. Peace! 30 on my waist. 60 on my waist. What? 90 to your face.